You see, China and the USA have been locked in a tug of war to dominate TSMC, the world's largest chip maker from Taiwan. For years, the USA has managed to stay slightly ahead. But now, China has brought a strong new player into the spotlight, SMIC, or Semiconductor Manufacturing International Corporation. And you know why we're putting it here? Because it's the only semiconductor underdog from China that isn't just competing with TSMC, it's on track to beat it and take the lead. And after facing a storm of criticism, allegations, and even bans, SMIC is still standing strong. So why are every giant chip maker afraid of their success? And why can't even the US stop them? And can they really beat TSMC in the near future? Let's know the answers. Let's go back to the year 2000. In the busy city of Shanghai, China took a big step by starting a company called Semiconductor Manufacturing International Corporation, or SMIC for short. The idea behind it was clear. China wanted to build its strong semiconductor industry and stop depending so much on other countries for chips and technology. SMIC was created as a company that focuses only on making chips that are designed by other companies. This kind of company is called a pure play foundry. Richard Chang was the man who paved the way for SMIC, a man who knew the semiconductor business inside and out. He had spent over 20 years working at Texas Instruments and had already helped set up a chip factory in Taiwan. So when he saw how fast China's demand for chips was growing, he saw a huge opportunity. At the same time, the Chinese government also wanted to grow its tech industry and was ready to support anyone who could help. Because of that, the government stepped in with real help, not just words. They offered SMIC cheap land, low-cost water, electricity, and even tax breaks. These things are extremely important when you're building large chip factories, also known as fabs. This support made it easier for SMIC to get off the ground. Also, even though the company was based in Shanghai, it was legally set up in the Cayman Islands. Many international companies do this to get certain tax and legal benefits. It gave the company more flexibility while doing business globally, but their main operations and leadership remained firmly rooted in China. Soon after, SMIC expanded to Tianjin, where it took over a former Motorola facility. This move instantly boosted its manufacturing strength without having to start from scratch. Then came Beijing, where SMIC began building another factory, this one fully owned as well, further locking in its footprint in the capital city. But perhaps the smartest part of their early game plan was how they approached Chengdu and Wuhan. Instead of pouring in their own funds, SMIC worked with local governments, which covered the capital costs. Usually in China, the government would build big industrial projects first and then later hand them over to private companies. But SMIC did it the other way around by teaming up with the local government. This made it easier to handle the huge expenses that come with building and running chip factories. All these strategic moves helped SMIC quickly rise through the ranks in China's semiconductor world, and by 2004, they made a bold leap, going public on both the New York Stock Exchange and the Hong Kong Stock Exchange. The IPO brought in a major cash flow, fueling further expansion. It also attracted big-name backers, including Datong Telecom Group, the China IC Industry Investment Fund, and international partners like Motorola. Of course, it wasn't all smooth sailing. SMIC had to face off against tough local competition, especially from Grace Semiconductor, another foundry with powerful political connections. But SMIC's leadership, combined with a sharp business strategy, helped it pull ahead and eventually become China's largest semiconductor foundry. From day one, the company was up against global giants like TSMC and Samsung in an industry that needs deep pockets, high-end equipment, and top engineering talent. But China had a clear goal to reduce its heavy dependence on foreign chips. Even though the country had a booming electronics scene, most of the semiconductors powering those devices were still being imported and SMIC was made to change that. Its lower prices attracted plenty of customers, including a few who had once worked with or for 
TSMC. That didn't sit well with the Taiwanese chipmaker. In 2003, TSMC filed a lawsuit in the U.S. of using trade secrets brought over by former employees. For a young company still trying to find its place, this was a massive challenge. The legal battle wasn't just expensive, it also took a hit on the chipmaker's image and slowed down its momentum. Eventually, SMIC had to settle the case. By 2005, it had paid TSMC $175 million and even handed over a stake in the company. That was a tough pill to swallow. The money and energy spent on that lawsuit could have gone into research and development or expanding its operations, but it became a wake-up call. SMIC started taking intellectual property more seriously, introduced stricter internal rules, and became more cautious about how it hired and handled sensitive information. If you think that's over, please hold. Because things got even harder for the Chinese chipmaker when it was cut off from the world's most advanced chipmaking equipment. The EUV lithography machines, mainly made by ASML in the Netherlands, are important for making high-performance chips. But export controls blocked SMIC from buying them. So instead, the company relied on older DUV machines and used a method called multi-patterning. It's slower, more complicated, and far less efficient, but SMIC's engineers made it work. Even in 2020, the Trump administration slapped harsh restrictions on SMIC during its final days. The Commerce Department of U.S. also added the chip maker to its entity list, which effectively cuts them off from U.S. suppliers and technology. And by the end of the year, SMIC found itself on a full U.S. blacklist, and they lose access to all advanced tech. Still, SMIC didn't fold. It kept pushing forward, adapting where it had to, and proving that even under heavy pressure, progress was possible. It's not just a story about building chips. It's a story about persistence, survival, and finding a way forward when the odds are stacked against you. Despite being under pressure, the chipmaker was also building strong partnerships behind the scenes. In 2015, it teamed up with Huawei, Qualcomm, and iMac International to launch a joint venture called SMIC Advanced Technology R&D. A year later, in 2016, the company co-founded Ningbo Semiconductor International Corporation, this time focusing on analog and specialty chips. SMIC held a majority share of 66.76%, which gave it strong control and leadership in the new venture. These partnerships not only expanded SMIC's tech capabilities, but also helped it win the trust of global clients like Huawei, Qualcomm, Broadcom, and Texas Instruments. And after the U.S. blacklisting issue, the Chinese chipmaker pushed forward again instead of backing down. By 2022, it had managed to produce seven nanometer chips using adapted tools from ASML. By continuing to operate and adapt, the Chinese chipmaker showed that sanctions, while disruptive, could be overcome. This raised questions about whether export controls would work in the long term or just push innovation elsewhere. Huawei and China's top chipmaker have built an advanced processor to power its latest smartphone. A big part of that progress came from the leadership of Liang Meng, one of SMIC's co-CEOs. With experience at both TSMC and Samsung, Liang had already played a role in developing 28 nanometer chips in his past work. At SMIC, he helped guide the company through one of its most difficult periods. You see, SMIC wasn't one of those Chinese companies that dominated from day one. It actually started out as a total beginner in the semiconductor world. They had to go up against the big guys, and along the way, they lost a lot of money and got blocked from getting the advanced machines. And just when things couldn't get any tougher, the U.S. stepped in with heavy restrictions. But even after all that, it didn't back down. That's what makes this story so impressive. No matter what came its way, it kept going. That's why we call it the unstoppable chipmaker from China.